Hello, I am Satish Singhal. In this video, I would like to talk to you about pointers being passed as argument to functions. Before watching this video, you should know something about pointers. Please watch the movie Introduction to Pointers. WMV before watching this movie. Then you should be able to understand what we are going to talk about in this movie. <clears throat> As you are aware that all data types can be passed as argument to the functions. Pointers are another data type which is store address of program variables and constants. So pointers can also be passed as arguments to functions. Okay. Passing pointers as arguments at times could be memory efficient because all pointers occupy only four bytes of memory. Uh, for example, a struct that you develop uh, in any program could be very large. Could be 30, 40, 50 bytes. Uh, just to give an idea, strings are never less than 30, 40 bytes. So instead of passing such large objects, you could pass a pointer to them to the function as an argument. Other reason to pass pointer is that when we want the pointy value to be changed by the function, then we pass pointer to the pointy as argument to the function. One of the excellent example of this is the swap function, which takes two pointers, which takes pointers to two integers and swaps the values stored in them. Uh, this kind of swapping is very important when we are sorting arrays in ascending or descending order. Uh, we scan from left to right. If our goal is to sort array in ascending order, we will locate the largest value. And once we reach the end of the unsorted array, we will swap the largest value from its current location to the last location in the unsorted array. So swap function is very useful. It's used in sorting all the time. OK, before uh, we go any further, uh, let me take you to Visual Studio. I want to show you the code for swap function. I want to make sure you understand that it works. And then I will come back to PowerPoint and explain the whole detail of that code. We'll do the code walkthrough. Uh, line by line. <clears throat> this is my program. This is the swap function I'm talking about. It's taking two int pointers, PTR1, PTR2 as argument. That's the prototype. This is the entire body of the function. So what function does, uh, first thing the function does is it gets a temporary integer, and into this we store the dereferenced value of PTR1, which is our first pointer. So wherever the pointer PTR1 is pointing to, we take the value of that, value of its point T, and we store that inside the temp. And then we start our swap process. So Wherever PTR1 is pointing to, its pointy gets the value of pointy of PTR2. So this is our first step in the swap. The second step is the pointy of PTR2 gets the value that we saved from here, the temp, and then our swap is done. Now, in the main function, we have two two integers, num1 and num2. Num1 is minus 5, num2 is 10. We call the swap function. 
when pointers are expected as function arguments, we have two choices. Either we can pass actual pointers when we make the function call, or we can pass the addresses of two, in this case, two integers as arguments. So if my swap function works correctly, then after this call is completed, I'm printing num1 and num2. Since num1 was minus 5, if my swap function worked correctly, num1 will become 10 and num2 will become minus 5. I've already compiled this program, so I'm just going to run it. See the result? And indeed, as you see here, after this call to swap function, num1 has become 10, num2 has become minus 5. The values got swapped. So the function works. We are going to take this code and walk through it using the PowerPoint step by step just to dissect it and exactly understand as to what's going on inside this code. Okay, so this is the code. It's exactly what we saw earlier. Uh, num1 is minus 5, num2 is 10. I make a call to swap function here. Then print out num1 and num2 after that. This is my swap function. Here I save the value of the pointy of ptr1 in temp. Do the first swap where ptr1 gets the value Pointy of PTR1 gets the value of the pointy of PTR2. Pointy of PTR2 gets the value of temp. What we are going to do, I'm going to code walk through line by line here so you understand exactly what's going on inside the memory map in the program. When we see this amber band here, that's the line being executed in the code. So num1 is minus 5. So in my RAM, this is my RAM cloud here. I create a variable of integer type called num1. Its memory address is 1000. And minus 5 has been stored inside it. OK. Then I execute this statement, int num2 equal to 10. So I create another variable in the RAM, num2 store 10 inside it, imagine its address is 2000. Then I call the swap function and pass to swap the address of num1 and the address of num2. When functions expect pointers, you can pass to them, as I said earlier, either the pointers or address of variables. Because pointers store addresses. So if you pass the address, that will get copied into the respective pointers. OK? So once we make this function call, what is going to happen is that address 1000, which is for num1, will get copied into PTR1 address 2000, which is the address of num2, will get copy into ptr2. This is ptr1. I might have misspoken earlier. So copy the address of num1 into ptr1 and address of num2 into ptr2. That's what you do. <clears throat> Once we have made this function call, the control has to shift swap function. So we get here. As soon as we get here, basically this PTR1 becomes a pointer to num1. After all, the address of num1 got copied into this. What is the meaning of copying an address? Well, it points, it becomes a pointer to num1. Okay? So this is not any different than if I declared in PTR one in star ptr1 here and say int star 
PTR1 equal to address of num1. This is exactly the same thing we are doing here. Okay. So PTR1 then points to num1. And in the same way, PTR2 pointer stores 2000 because this address got copied inside PTR2 and it points to num2. So it's a pointer to num2. Oh, and in other words, num1 is the pointy of PTR1, num2 is the pointy of PTR2. <coughs> Then, in this step, I have temp1, and inside temp1, I copy the value of PTR, pointy of PTR1. And as I have said in previous videos, the meaning of this asterisk in front of the pointer is, read the address inside the pointer, follow the pointer to that address, get the value stored there. So now I got uh, the left hand side here completed. Assignment operator says take that value and store that inside temp. So that's this statement. Get the value stored at the point of PTR1 and copy into temp. Okay. <clears throat> then in next program statement the meaning here is PTR2 is a pointer. Follow the PTR2 pointer to the address stored in it, which is 2000. Get the value stored there, 10 in this case. Okay. So this part is complete then. And then assign it to the pointy of PTR1. Pointy of PTR1 is num1, which is 10 here. So basically copy this value here. So remove the value 5 and copy that here. Okay. <clears throat> so copy into pointy of PTR1 the value of pointy of PTR2. That's the meaning of this statement here. And lastly, this statement, so whatever is stored in the temp, which is minus 5, go to the point of PTR2, take the address stored in PTR2, follow the pointer to its address, whatever is stored there, previously change that to minus 5. Do this operation basically from store this value. Okay, so copy into point of PTR2, the value stored in the temp. So this way, you can already see the swap is actually already finished when the function call is made. And now I'm at the last line of the function. And you can say, say that num1 has become 10, num2 has become minus 5. Temp is still there because I, I have not exited the function. Now, as soon as I exit the function, which is this block, this curly brace, uh, the control will be shifted back to this line. When function exits, all the local variables created here are destroyed. So pretty soon you will see that these things will be gone, disappear from our diagram because they are actually destroyed in actual program. So function call is complete. I get back to the same point from where I jumped to the function call and all the swap function local variables are destroyed. That's done automatically. And what is left in the RAM is num1 and num2 in this state. If I execute this statement, see out num1, then since num1 is 10, it's going to print 10 to the console. This is my console here. And if I see out num2, it's going to print minus 5 to the console. Okay, there's an error here. There should be a minus here. Uh, let me actually just do that. So 
there is a minus here. Sorry about the error. <coughs> so that's how pointers can be passed as argument to the function. In this case, we made the use of the pointer property that through the pointer indirectly, we can change the value stored in their point G. In C++, I think I've shown you when we discuss functions, you could do this by reference also. If I remove the pointer, put a ampere sign there and here, we can do it that way as well. But pointer is additional way of doing it, okay? So it gives you some idea how pointers work when we pass them to the functions. And this completes the swap. Again, I have slight error here. Let me fix that. Minus five. Thank you. In next video, we will be discussing pointers to objects.